Jim Nance. This is an amazing morning. Raf, thank you. He wasn't kidding about coming right in from the French Quarter, by the way. We all know that. My first NCAA tournament game was in 1986, and I worked it with Raft, and it was in Greensboro, North Carolina, and it was Duke against Old Dominion. Little did I know that many years down the road, after doing games in the 80s in the studio and hosting the Final Four, as Brent and Billy called the games, that Raft and I would be reunited, along with Grant and Tracy. And it has been such a gift to be able to sit by your side. You think about it, 80s, 90s, we're talking now a lot of decades here, a lot of decades. And you are a gift to this game of college basketball, Raft, you really are. And this room right here loves you, everyone, you're everyone's friend. Now let me tell you about a friend that you may not know that you have, but he has been your friend because he has directed the Final Four since 1982, right here in New Orleans since the Jordan shot. And tomorrow night will mark his final time in the chair directing a Final Four, 40 of them. Think of all the images that he's brought to you. Valvano running around the floor looking for someone to hug. A hug from John Thompson to Freddie Brown. On and on, you can go through every single game. And it came through the imagination of a guy named Bob Fishman, who this game really owes a great debt of gratitude. Bob Fishman, tomorrow, the last time. He is better than ever, but after all these years, this will mark his final time directing the Final Four in the championship game. My friend, Bob Fishman, right here. Come on, stand up, Bob. Whew. Beth, man, I tell you, I not a, a lot of sleep for any of us. <laughs> we had a gathering last night that went pretty late. And I'm always a pretty nostalgic and emotional guy to begin with on a good night's rest. Uh, but Beth, uh, thank you. I was inspired by your talk and honored by your words. Coach, so happy to see you recognized for what you did this year. We've got a friendship that is just starting and a common bond uh, that runs beyond just one shining moment and our love of that song that will sign us off the air tomorrow night. I'm so happy for you, what you bring to college basketball. I was introduced to this game in this city in 1969. We lived here for about four years. My dad had played college basketball at Guilford College in North Carolina. He took his young son to see a game for the first time about two miles from here. It was called the Sugar Bowl Basketball Tournament. Iowa was there, coached by Dick Schultz, who would later become not only the president of the NCAA, but he also chaired the NCAA Basketball Committee. Western Kentucky, with a great player named Jim McDaniels and Clem Haskins. Duke was there. Vic Bubis was the coach. And I watched this guy also lead the fourth team, named Guy Lewis, at the University of Houston. Little could I have known that one day my life would intersect with that man who paraded up and down the sideline with a polka dot towel in his hands at all times. See, shortly after that experience at the Sugar Bowl basketball tournament, I began to get this crazy idea that one day I wanted to be a storyteller for a living. I wanted to be one of those voices that came into my living room that moved me. I wanted to work for CBS, right down to the network. I got to go to the University of Houston, masquerade as a golfer, 
surround myself with some exceptional talent in golf. But I went there really with one goal in mind, and that was to figure out the path that would one day give me the chance to be recognized by the CBS television network. My coach asked us to stand up on day one at campus, say your name, where you went to high school, what you want to do with your life. He was a Mike Krzyzewski, John Wooden of college golf. He won 16 national championships. I stood up first out of the seven freshmen, said my name. I'm from Colts Neck, New Jersey. My family had migrated around the country. And one day I want to work for CBS. CBS didn't have college basketball at this time, but I also added the line, and one day I want to broadcast the Masters tournament. Sat down. Fourth guy stood up, bashfully said, I'm Fred Couples. I'm from the university, I'm from Seattle, Washington, and one day I want to win the Masters. We ended up, by no accident, sharing a dorm room at the University of Houston where the coach said, go figure it out, you two. Your dreams end up in the same place. We used to talk about one day how our careers were going to take us there. And we believed in one another. We didn't ridicule or slight. There was nothing snarky about it. He believed in me, made me feel like it was possible. I believed in him. Right down to actually even practicing a green jacket ceremony in our dorm room. That's the kind of hijinks we were up to. 30 years ago this week, 30 years ago this week, Freddie was my runner at the Final Four in Minneapolis. He came there ranked number one in the world. And I knew the next week that something special was going to happen. I saw Christian over here. Great to be in his company again for what he did for college basketball and to be able to document those days. What an honor. Christian, Grant, Bobby, Coach K, Thomas, Brian, Antonio, that whole team. They tore down the nets on Monday night. And on Sunday evening, I was there in Butler Cabin presenting my old roommate with a green jacket. Dreamers, I think that's what you talked about, Ed. Dreamers. Anybody that makes it, you may not express it like we've been given this chance today to talk about it, but we're all dreamers, every one of us. You've got to find that thing that's in your heart and nurture it. Feed it with a lot of love and passion. I didn't get here, thankfully, because of my basketball playing ability. I got one of my great friends and teammates from Marlboro High School with me here today. Cliff, my lifelong best buddy. We were 0-22 our junior year. I co-captained the team our senior year to a big turnaround to 2-20. and So, Barry, you're recognizing Eric. You're recognizing a guy with a career record of 2-42. and but I did average six a game and went off on Shore Regional one time for 15 points. But I knew what the dream was even back in those days. Like I said, it was long before high school. My coach knew it. He introduced me to Guy Lewis. Guy said, I'll give you a chance. You could be my public address announcer at Hoffheinz Pavilion for the home games. I was a student. Man, I felt like a big shot. First time with a microphone in my, my hands. And I'm doing these, uh, by the way, player introductions inside the arena. It's simulcasting over the air. And I have to push my voice to, you know, introduce number 32 out of Buffalo, New York, Christian Leitner. You know, whatever it is. <clears throat> I had no voice left after I did that last night. Um, but that gets back to the beginning. That was my first gig, was the PA. Guy gave me a chance, then he let me host his TV show, and it all led to the path of one day being discovered by these folks over here, my CBS family. Bless you all for coming out today. That was a, that was a very big day for everyone who loves the game, people that try to document it. This table over here is so special to me their friends, their teammates, their colleagues. And it's, it's rich and it's deep. I, I'd like to think that it's, um, it's really personal, all of you. And I, 
I thank you all for being here. Thank you so much. So, thank you for this award. Barry Goheen, YouTube him. You won't believe some of the shots this guy hit. I can't believe when I meet people like Barry Goheen because to me, they're still giants in my mind and I've had the chance to document them. Marcus, I'd get a chance to document you, but man, I love watching you play. Number 54 in your program. TJ Ford led a team here in New Orleans in 2003. And that guy over there, Bill Walton, I say it every time I see him at a Final Four, God bless him for what he's brought to college basketball. Not only with his legendary prowess as a player, but when you go around, and we're back for the first time doing this since 2019, we go to these events. He's at everything that promotes our game. Everything. I mean, he had a giant career past UCLA. But, you know, in his heart, this is where it is. It's where his basketball life really resides. I can't say it enough, last night was a giant win for us who care about the future of college basketball. We had a stage, it was, there was tension in the air, Fish cut a show that made it to the millions around the world who watched it just feel so big and gigantic. You know, this sport, you boil it down, you hear Beth, you hear, you hear Ed, it's a slice of Americana. It's a dream. The tournament is a dream. Everybody gets a chance to try to qualify to get to this tournament. You get one shot. We're here in an edifice that uh, celebrates dreamers who fought for something. I can't help but think about my grandfather who fought in World War I, stationed in Siberia, an uncle who served in World War II, my father who was in the Army in the Korean War. This young man right here, who's a lieutenant in the Navy and flying on missions on and off of aircraft carriers, Lieutenant Andrew Delaney. Special. It's all tied together to the one common theme, passion and a dream. And tomorrow night, another dream's going to come true for one team. I can't wait to have the chance to lend that voice to document it. And I can't wait when it ends to stand on that floor and be able to share that moment with my oldest, my Caroline. It's a ritual that goes back decades now, decades. And that's for three minutes. That's our time. That's our time. And Caroline, I can't tell you how much it means to me. To all my friends, all of you who came up early this morning to be here for this from all over the country. Thank you, you mean the world to me, to the college basketball community. Let's take this momentum we got here in New Orleans and let's move it forward. This is a great time for all of us. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for one of the greatest honors I'll ever, ever receive. Thank you very, very much. Thank you.